What's going on guys? We're back again for the last episode of our $2,000 G35 drift build. So in today's episode, we are gonna be taking the car to the track, but before we do that, I just wanted to go over the price breakdown of the entire build, just so you know where we're at before we go drifting. So for the costs, um, the car was $1,883. The angle kit was $259.20. The rear adjustable arms were $200. Our bucket seat was $250. Our adjustable seat rails were $128.40. It was $75 to have our diff welded. We spent $34.23 on our power steering pump. We spent $140 on our axles, $33 on our wheel bearing, $81.31 on our test pipes, $60 on our new battery, $64.09 on our wheel spacers, $18 on our wheel paint, and $25 for our fire extinguisher. This brings us to a total cost of $3,251.23 for the build. That is before any of our sales. Now we were able to sell our stock headlights for $150. We sold one of our catalytic converters that was half empty for $165. Our stock rear arms for $60. The interior clock for $30. The other cat for $350. The grill for $50. The change under the seat, we found a dollar and one cent. We sold the front crash bar for $100. We sold the rear crash bar for $100. We sold all of the interior trim pieces and like door sills, that sort of thing for a hundred bucks. We were able to sell the wing for a hundred dollars and we sold all of the interior carpeting and trim from the trunk for $50. Now, if we subtract the sales from our total cost, this gives us a total cost of $1,995.22. So I was partying the car out and I pretty much just stopped selling pieces off the car once we got to our $2,000 goal because I was kind of getting to a point where we were taking stuff off that we kind of didn't want to take off because it was pretty much the next thing we were going to be able to sell would be like the bumpers, like parts of the headliner. And I didn't really want to take that stuff off the car because I thought that would kind of detract from the overall aesthetic and appearance of the interior. So, so that's where we're at. Now we'll send it back to George, who is on his way to the racetrack. So we are finally on our way to take out the G35 for its first drift event. Uh, I'm heading up to the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. I drove yesterday in my S13 and went home, dropped off the S13, and now I'm going to be taking the G35. Um, I did figure out that one of the wheels that came on the G35 is actually super bent um, after I had gotten tires mounted on it. So that's kind of unfortunate. I did just swap some tires around and I'm just gonna run the front tires and wheels off of my S13 for now. Just cause I was kind of in a time crunch. I had one day and kind of seemed like the best move just to get out to the event. Um, in hindsight, I could have probably just gone on Facebook and bought like a set of cheap um, wheels, but I thought this was an easier thing to do. I went ahead and bought some used tires and put those onto the stock 18s. And I also brought an extra set of the 17s I run on my 240 with some almost brand new tires on them that I just got a few laps on at the end of the event. Super excited to drive the car. I'm pretty sure everything on it is all set. I think that I've done everything I need to. I think it will pass tech inspection. Um, but I guess we'll see. I brought up some tools and bolts and nuts, so probably should be able to fix most things if there's something wrong, but should be good. I think the only thing that could go wrong is the car getting hot just because there might not be enough coolant in it. Um, I bled the cooling system a few times um, after I pulled off the radiator hose to do the power steering pump. However, um, I haven't really used the car, put it under load um, for extended periods of time, then parked it in the line for drifting. So we'll see how that goes. Super excited. See you guys in a quick second and we'll be in the car. steering angle on my 240 and I am not used to it.
so I'm definitely noticing severe lack of angle and the handbrake works, but it's just in such an awkward position. I like can't pull it while I'm driving. Also, it gets really hot when I'm just sitting in line. So I might have to bleed the coolant again. It might have air in it. And I've got the heat blasting. After like 15 seconds of driving, it goes back to the middle, but it is it gets hot after you sit in line and then drives. Maybe I'll just turn it off. I don't know. just like super awkward I was doing weird stuff yesterday too in my 240 I don't know but as you can see like it gets it cools down super fast it's just annoying that it can't do it I think there's just an air bubble somewhere in the cooling system or maybe the radiator fans aren't turning on I don't know I'm gonna look after this session I think I've only got like 15 minutes left so it's not really worth like I'd rather just have to take a lap at the end of each lap then just go park it and try and bleed it because everything's gonna be hot so not that comfortable in this and like on that weird initiate or transition in the back I kind of want to grab the handbrake just to like set the car up for like the tighter corner and I just I don't know I'm just trying really hard not to because I know the handbrake's super hard to get to like it'll lock the tires up if you're kind of sideways but it's just so hard to get to yeah so the car I mean everything we did feels great the bucket seats awesome um I do wish we did like a handbrake extension. Like if I stuck like a pipe on it, it would be in a much more opportune area. But that's good. Angle's good. I just think this is just so different from my 240. I mean, it's kind of tough to get used to. I can definitely feel there's a ton more weight in this car. But I don't know. All in all, I think it's going really well. I'm just going to grab some breakfast now. I'm just kind of thinking about the car and like how everything's going. And I'm definitely not being as aggressive as I would be in my 240 just because I'm not like that confident in transition just because I think the car's heavier doesn't have as much steering angle I'm not that familiar with it and I'm not that comfortable with like the handbrake and on top of all of that it's kind of getting hot um like when I'm waiting in grid to go which is kind of annoying to like have to think about while I'm trying to think about how I'm going to improve my next run however I do think after this um after I get back and wait a bit um I'm gonna wait like an hour hour and a half and I'll be able to probably add some more coolant and try and bleed it again when the entire thing isn't super hot and I'm not gonna get a face full of hot coolant. So that's the plan for now. Um, it's definitely pushing my skills to the limit. Like I definitely have gotten comfortable just driving a 240SX because they're like so, I don't wanna say easy to drive, but it's light, mine is like now it has plenty of power. I have a nice handbrake. I have plenty of steering angle. So um, it definitely inspires more confidence and I kind of have to dial it all back um, with this car, which I think is good. It's, I don't know, probably teaching me more car control skills, but yeah, having a lot of fun. Definitely a solid $2,000 drift car if I have ever seen one, but we'll make it better and keep going. So just trying to bleed the coolant again now. So while attempting to bleed the coolant, I was able to 
break this thing and it actually just deteriorated, leaked pretty much all the coolant onto the ground. Um, now I'm gonna go on a search for um, some sort of piece like this. It's not gonna have a bleeder on it, so it's gonna be even harder to bleed the coolant, but we're gonna do what we can. So I broke the heater core line, fixed it. Um, then I was still looking at the car and the passenger side radiator fan just doesn't spin. I tried switching the wires around and no matter which wires are used, that one won't spin. And just like spinning them, it does feel worse. So I think that fan that fan's actually just dead. So I dumped all of the coolant out of the cooling system for nothing by breaking that thing. So trying to re-bleed the seal system now for the first time. And I guess I'm just gonna try and turn the car off when I'm waiting in line, but. Shoot, that's annoying. should lift a little bit because it's starting to over rotate but all in all this thing's awesome especially now that it's not getting hot i can run the ac on the grid it's so nice put all the windows up then turn it off for the lap it's awesome
finished up the event. I am driving back home now. And I would say it was a complete success. Um, I will say right when I got there, like my first couple of laps in the car, I was like really not happy with it. Like I was like, this is terrible. Like I was so disappointed. Um, however, I would say mostly because the car was getting hot and I had to like do a cool lap after every lap. And I was like, this is a stock like G35, like why do I have to do this? Um, so I finished that session. Um, I realized the handbrakes were difficult to access. If I need like a handbrake extension, I could probably just try that instead of doing a hydraulic handbrake. Because the handbrake locks up the tires. It's just super awkward to get to with the bucket seat installed, which I didn't really notice until I got to the event and tried to use it. Um, steering angle, I wish there was more, but at the end of the day, like it's fine. And getting the um, GK Tech lower control arms that go with this like knuckle bolt-on kit aren't isn't that expensive, so um, that would definitely be a good upgrade for the car. Well, I was trying to bleed the coolant, which was pretty straightforward, and I tried to open, like, there's a bleeder on one of the heater core lines, and when I tried to open it, I just, like, sheared the entire, like, bleeder housing off, because it was just, like, the super old plastic, um, and then it just dumped, like, half my coolant onto the parking lot, and unfortunately, it was antifreeze, and I had to, like, call the track people, and they would like, come clean it up, and I, like, felt bad, um, but it got cleaned up, and it was fine, and at that point, I was, like, so frustrated, I was, like, the car isn't driving how I want to. Um, it, this just broke. I, I don't want to deal with it. I was like, I'm just going to put it on the trailer and go home. Then I was like, well, I can't put it on the trailer. I think I'm just going to dump more coolant out. So I went. Um, the super nice dude gave me this, like, um, threaded fitting. And it was just awesome. I just replaced the adapter with the threaded fitting. Put the hose clamps on both sides. Filled it up with coolant. And I was at that point, I was like, okay, maybe I'll just drive it again. Um, filled it up with coolant. Bled it. Um, did not get as hot. Realized the problem I actually was having is that one of the radiator fans is completely ruined. I tried switching the wires. I tried like bumping it. You can, it's like super stiff. I thought maybe it was like lodged on something, but I think the fan's just bad, which I think is why the car would get hot like when I was waiting in the line. But like if I just took a super short drive, it would cool right down. So yeah, that was unfortunate, but I got that fixed, got it bled. And then for the rest of the day, it was a little bit awkward, like initiating. I wasn't like super comfortable with it, but I definitely at the end of the day got a lot more comfortable. Um, figured out how to initiate. I tried to drive without the handbrake completely because I figured it was just kind of difficult and it was really hard to access. And I had to remember to hit like the button on it because I didn't like it to spring out. Um, all my fault at the end of the day. But yeah, I had a ton of fun. This car, it actually impressed me so much. I was driving my S13 yesterday at this same event and um, I finally got it figured out and I was having so much fun. I was like, is it even worth driving the G35? And I was like, no, like I want to do it, see how it is. And I have to say, I'm really happy with it. Got that fan fixed, um, get the handbrake figured out, and maybe it control arms, and this thing would be sorted for like a beginner, for like a mid-level drift car. Um, it would be plenty fast to keep up with most cars out there. And I just think the biggest detriment was really the lack of having a handbrake. Um, made it really hard to like drive, um, and it was really hard to like set myself up for like with the tighter corner on the track. But all in all, awesome time. I am so glad that we got this car done. And at the end of the day, $2,000 for a drift car, I like I, you, I don't think you can ask for more, quite honestly. Um, so yeah, if you guys did enjoy this video, of course, make sure to leave a like, um, subscribe, because I want to do stuff like this more often. And of course, like let me know what you guys want to see in the future. Do you want to see me continue working on this car? Do you want to see me do this with another car? Um, I'm really interested in doing like a similar build to other cars that I find interesting. So yeah, of course, let me know, and I will see you guys in the next video.